Hi there and welcome to tutorial 8 which is on Kruskal's algorithm. This is for the Edexcel Decision 1 Maths A level course but is applicable to most decision or discrete Maths A level modules. For any more help with your Maths studies, GCSE or A level, do see my YouTube channel or my website. Okay, let's start by looking at Edexcel specification. Um, and the algorithms we need to know about graphs. Now, in green, I've highlighted what we know. We know how to uh, represent a, a network or a, or a graph with a matrix and go from matrix back to a network or graph. Right, but what we're going to learn in this tutorial is we're going to learn about what a minimum spanning tree is or a minimum connector uh, and the problem there, and we're going to do it by what's called Kruskal's algorithm. Okay? Right, let's um, start straight away by taking a look. Now, the first thing we need to recall is what a spanning tree is, okay? Because this problem is about finding a minimal spanning tree. Now, I've done this in a previous, the graphs uh, tutorial, but let's just remind ourselves what a spanning tree is. A spanning tree of a graph G, so this is a graph G, is a tree so that all the vertices are connected. Now, what's a tree again? Well, a tree is a graph where there is no cycles. So we want to connect up all these vertices, but we don't want to have any cycles in it. Okay, so let's have a look at possible examples. I suggest you pause the video and have a go at a few examples yourself. See if you can draw a few spanning trees of that graph based on the fact you've done my previous tutorials. Okay, so here's a, a look of one. Okay, certainly everything's connected in this example here, and there are certainly no cycles. And here's an example of another one. Again, certainly everything is connected there, but there are no cycles. Okay, and do notice for any graph G with n vertices, a spanning tree has n minus one edges. Now let me just point out here, if I had drawn in an arc there, that could not have been a spanning tree. Yes, everything's connected, but there is a cycle. Okay, So it's important that not only is everything connected, but no cycles are formed. And you always get that. If you have n uh, vertices, you will have n minus 1 arcs. Okay, right. Now we need to talk what a minimum spanning tree is, okay, or a minimum connector problem we might deal with. Now, here's our original graph. The problem, the minimum connector problem, is what is the um, small, smallest tree in weight that connects up those vertices? What is the minimum spanning tree? Okay, so we need to have a spanning tree that connects all those vertices but has the least weight. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So I suggest you look at that graph there and see if you have a go, try and draw a few spanning trees and try and see if you can find which one is the smallest, i.e. has the least weight. And that will be your minimal spanning tree. So pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you a few. Okay, well, this is certainly a spanning tree, okay, because all the edges are, all the vertices are connected. What's its weight? Well, 6, add 5 is 11, add 8 is 19, add 7 is 26. That has weight 26. Okay, can I do any better than that? Well, let's take a look here. Let's have a look at another one. I've drawn another one here. Everything is certainly connected. It's a spanning tree, there are no cycles. And what's this weight? 2 and 6 is 8, add 5 is 13, add 9 is 22. Okay, that has certainly less weight than the previous one we had, which was 26. Okay, and the next one? Right, what have we got here? It's certainly a spanning tree because all the edges are connected and there are no um, cycles. And its weight is 5 and 4 is 9, okay, add 8 is 17, and add another 7 is 24. 
So out of the ones we did previously, the one that was 22 was the least. Now, I don't know for sure if that's the absolute minimum spanning tree. In order to find that out, I'd have to list every possible spanning tree and check which one is the least weight, has the least weight. Luckily for us, there are algorithms that find us and guarantee us to find the minimal spanning tree and hence find the smallest way or the minimum connector um, for uh, a graph, how to connect the graph in the least possible way. Okay, what we're going to learn about is Kruskal's algorithm. And Kruskal's algorithm helps us find the minimum spanning tree. So I'm going to use the example I've been playing around with previously. Here's the algorithm below, which I suggest you take a note of. Okay, pause the video and take a note. I'm going to work it through for you, show you how to write it in the exam, and then uh, let's see what is the minimum spanning tree. First thing you do is you must list the arcs in ascending order of weight. The smallest is this one. So AE is 2. Right, the next smallest, um, well, there's two 4. So there's that 4 and there's that 4. Okay, so CE is 4 and AC is 4. Okay, then we've got a 5 here. So BC is 5. Okay, then we've got um, two sixes here. So AB is six, that six, and BE is six. Okay, now the next one is this seven here. So we've got ED is seven, and then we've got two eights. We've got AD and BD, so AD is A and B D is eight and we've got C D last which is nine. Okay. So we've listed them out in order. Okay. You must do that in the exam. List them out in order. Now I'm going to rub this off here and because we've covered everything. How do we know we've covered everything by the way? Well we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a complete graph. This is K5 you you'll remember Okay, and K5 said the number of connections in K5 was n, n minus 1 over 2, which would be 5 times 4 over 2, which is 10. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we know we're done. Right, that's step 1. Then choose the arc of least weight to be part of T. So this is the arc of least weight, so I'm going to label that 1. And in here, I'm going to draw AE as part of my graph there. Okay. Choose now from those arcs remaining the arc of least weight as long as it doesn't form a, a cycle and add it to T. If there are two the same, choose one at random. Okay, now from here, CE does not form a cycle, so that's going to be my second one. And I'm going to draw in there that I'm going to have uh, CE or EC. Now AC, unfortunately AC would, if I choose this next, that would form a cycle, okay? So I'm supposed to go back here, repeat step three. That would form a cycle. So at this stage, I'm going to eliminate that one. Now BC, that wouldn't form a cycle, so I'm going to include that as my third one, okay? And I'm going to draw that in here. BC would be my third one there, okay? AB, then AB would form a cycle, so I've got to ignore AB. BE, B to E would form a cycle, so I've got to ignore that, okay? E to D, that would not form a cycle, okay? So I'm going to include that as my fourth one, okay? And, and there we go. Now, a couple of things to say here. I know this is certainly a tree, a spanning tree here, because it's got one, two, three, four arcs, and there are always one less than the number of nodes for a tree. So I know uh, I'm complete at this point. The other way of saying it is everything is certainly connected. I've connected all the vertices here. Now, what is my minimum spanning tree, therefore? Okay, so my minimum spanning tree is as follows. I'm going to write my minimum spanning tree as AE
um, of 2, CE of 4, uh, BC of 5, ED of 7, and the total weight of that is 2 and 4 is 6, add 5 is 11, add 7 is actually 18. So the minimum spanning tree has weight of 18 in this case, which was better than any of the ones we tried out previously. And that's it. It's as simple as this to apply this algorithm here. Okay. Do make sure you show the examiner how you uh, got each of your ones here. And also eliminate these here. Um, you should, when you eliminate, write beside it perhaps, cycle would form. Okay, cycle would form. Okay, cycle would form, etc. In the ones you've crossed out, so he, so he or she knows what you've done. Uh, and there we go. That's about the extent of Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, so make sure you learn it and you can apply it. Okay. Now I'm going to show you two questions. Pause the video, have a go, work through it. Then I'll show you the answers. So here we go. In ten seconds, I'll show you the answers. And the answers to these using the minimal spanning trees for these are as follows. Okay, there are the arcs. I got a total of 56 in this first one, and here are the arcs here, and I got a total of 53 in this one. Now, you should have listed in order all your arcs and described which ones you chose in what order and which ones you crossed off and why. I didn't have space on my slide to do that. But in the exam, there are marks for doing the first step, which is listing all the arcs with all the associated weights in order and then going through each one and stating whether it's in your arc or whether it's not, it, sorry, whether it's in your minimal spanning tree or whether it's not. Okay, and last thing to say is homework and further study. Um, read chapter 3, which is page 40 to 44, which are the examples on Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, make sure you understand. And then do exercise 3A, which is on page 44 of your Ed Excel book, questions 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then I'd suggest you do the past paper questions 8 video, which are the questions that I have worked through and done on Kruskal's algorithm, so you can check your knowledge against past exam questions. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the following useful in your revision and study of Decision Maths 1.